Did you know you can create epic thumbnails totally free? Today I'm gonna show you how to create this thumbnail using free software, DaVinci Resolve. It's gonna be awesome. Hello my YouTube friends, DaVinci Resolve is a free tool I've shown a bit here for editing your live streaming footage into videos for use on your channel. But you can use it to easily create awesome thumbnails for your videos and streams. There are links in the description down below so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. So you know what? Let's get to it! Alright, so we need to open up DaVinci Resolve and we're just gonna... Go ahead and start an untitled project here. Then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and click on edit. And I wanna go to our media pool. And what I'm gonna do is just go and drag in some assets. There's a picture of me and a background. And we'll just drag these down onto the timeline, background all the way in the back, and the picture of me above that. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. Now we're gonna right click on the picture of me and we're going to select open fusion page. Now I'm gonna select this right here and I'm just gonna create some dots. This will create a mask. And then we're just gonna add more dots to actually finish up this mask and all you have to do is stretch it out like this. Now in order to zoom in, you just hit control and use your scroll on your mouse wheel. And you can click anywhere on these lines to create more dots. And of course, you can use the little bars on the end to curve your dots around to make sure they have the contour of what you're trying to mask out. In this case, we're just masking out the background. And I admit that this can take a little bit of time and there might be easier ways to do it. Obviously, if you just wanna put a photo like this in some sort of free editing program, you can just remove the background before you ever put it into DaVinci Resolve. But I did wanna show you that it is possible to go ahead and just remove the background in DaVinci Resolve. And it really doesn't take that long. And I think if you do it often enough, you're gonna get pretty quick at it. It's pretty easy and it will look much more natural if you do it this way. And we can go back over and see what this looks like. You can see I still have a little bit of a blue edge around me. So I'm going to go back into Fusion and select that polygon piece. And then just go ahead and adjust the soft edges and the width of our actual edge. Move it in just a little bit. And we can see the blue kind of moving a little bit. We'll go back in again and we'll just move that edge in a little more. And there we go. So now we have a pretty good cutout of me. It looks not too bad. Now there is a little piece right here. We zoom in, we wanna mask this out as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that polygon tool again and just add some dots in here to circle out this little green piece right here. And you just connect them and you go over here and you go from merge to subtract, it removes it and there we go. So now that's all gone, we're all set. What I wanna do now is I want to right click on our image and we want to create a new compound clip and then just click create. And this kind of locks in that whole mask so you don't have to worry about it moving around or doing anything goofy. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and modify the image a little bit. We'll scroll down over here in our effects and we can adjust the depth or we can adjust the yaw. So we can turn it a little bit to the side and we can adjust the actual rotation angle like this. And then I'm gonna move me all the way over to the edge over here a little bit. And just position me where I think is gonna work the best. Then I'm gonna go and select the background. I'm gonna zoom that in a little bit, move the position and yeah, that looks okay for now. Next, we're gonna add some text. So we'll go up to the top left and select effects and we're gonna select titles and we can just drag this text right down here. We'll stick it on top. You can see that it puts text right there. We just wanna select it. We'll go and change what our text will say and then we're gonna drop this down and find a font for our text. Go ahead and change the size. We'll click here and we'll select a color for our text. Click OK and we'll go down here and we're gonna add an outline to our text. And we're gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow. And you just move your drop shadow to the left and up and down right here. You can change the opacity and the blur on your drop shadow. 
to make it look exactly how you want. Then we'll just go up to the top here and what we're gonna do is use this right here to change the position, move it all the way over to the right edge, put it where we want it. Now we can go over here to the settings tab on the top and we can change our pitch and yaw. So we can give our text a little bit of an angled look just makes it look cooler and we can change our position right here as well. And there we go, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna drag another piece of text in here and we'll go ahead up and change the actual text and we'll change the font and we'll change our color right here. And you can kind of go back to the other text to make sure that you have the settings essentially the same. We'll move our drop shadow around we're gonna go ahead and move this text all the way over to the right. Then we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna adjust the y'all on this one as well to give it a little bit of an angle. We'll move it around and we can drag me over top of it so you can see that I can end up over top of the text. And right now we're just gonna adjust it to make sure that everything is kinda of in the location that we want it. And you can see how easy it is to just select any of the assets, move them where you want them, adjust the size, change their angles, rotate them around, even skew them. It's really simple to do all of this once you get the methodology down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select the image of me, and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and drag it all the way down to the bottom. So it adds another image of me. And the reason why I'm gonna do this will become clear in a second. I'm gonna go over here and select the color tab. Then I'm going to select that second duplicated image of me and I'm just gonna drag these all the way up so the image becomes really yellow. And what this is gonna do is add kind of a glowing outline around my edges. So it looks like we have a little bit of stroke on the edges surrounding me. And there are lots of different ways to do this, but this is pretty effective and easy to do. Now if we go back over here and we can actually Make sure all of our colors are all the way adjusted up to the yellow. So we can move these over to the yellow as well. And you can of course do a color match with this if you want, but I think this works just fine. Now that everything looks like it's been changed to yellow and you can see what it looks like up in the top right hand corner, it's just all yellow. If we go over here, you can see I have a little bit of a yellow outline. And what I can do is actually select that image and I can go over here and I can adjust how big the image is so we can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. We can adjust the opacity. So it kind of looks like I have a yellow drop shadow. And of course, I would probably, if I was going to release this thumbnail, do a little bit more of a color match so that the yellow on me matches the yellow in the background. You can also go ahead and change the way that the actual outline interacts with everything else. But normal seems to work the best. I mean, we're basically just adding a stroke around a character. It makes it really easy to do this. And a lot of people like to use this type of effect in their thumbnails because it just makes me stand off the page a little bit better. So it looks pretty good. We can go back into color then to export this. And we're going to right click on our image that we wanna export and we're gonna select a grab still. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to select the gallery here in the top left and we can see our stills all we have to do is right click on that still and select export and then we want to go ahead and change it from the dpx to whatever format we want to export it in png or jpeg whichever one it's still going to export the dpx file anyways but you will get the jpeg file that you want and change the name up right here. So just make sure you put it in a directory where you can find it and just click save. Then we can go onto our hard drive and select that file and you can see it right there. Looks pretty epic. We have a thumbnail ready to go. It's that simple. If you wanna see more content on editing video in DaVinci Resolve, let me know about it in the comments. And if you wanna see how to create an awesome stinger transition for your live stream really easy in DaVinci Resolve, check this video out. Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.